Hey, happy Sunday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. And I'm going to let you know what the latest updates is on this big snowstorm coming. We still have a big snowstorm coming for Thanksgiving, coming all the way to the south, all the way towards the east as well, potentially bringing a lot of snow, especially in Canada. They're still getting a big blockbuster of snow. Plus, we have the severe weather. Now, it has mild and way down for today, but it did also grow into Tuesday, just like we talked in yesterday's video. So there is chances for tornadoes going on for Monday. This is going to be mostly along the coast of Louisiana, Texas, and a little bit of Alabama, a little bit of Mississippi, and the Panhandle of Florida. It's going to go all the way into Tuesday as well, bringing you the chances for tornadoes as we get this convection right along the Gulf Coast, bringing this banding, and I will go through it so you can see your best timing of when this is going to happen. It's still going to be overnight Monday into Tuesday. And we'll go through that. Timestamps will be in the description below. If you like all your weather updates and you like to be ahead of the weather, I've been talking about this snowstorm and Arctic blast coming for over two weeks. So make sure you subscribe. I am all year long. Now let's get into your information. Now, if you have seen on my community tab this morning, that we have big changes coming with our temperature anomaly, what we've been talking about here for a long time. Below average temperatures, next 6 to 10 days, and from the 8 to 14 days, sticking around but being even milder. Now, this is going to affect your precipitation as well for the next 6 to 10-day temperature probability across southeast all the way towards north central. You're going to be below average on the northwest, but the next 14 days, it's going to stay in that pattern. will be a little bit closer towards the Gulf. So you are going to get more precipitation in the south. That's normally what you're supposed to get on this pattern that we're going into. But this is changing this snowstorm as well. And I'm still showing that it's going to be a potential chance for ice, bringing some ice storms and some big snowstorms coming with this. But there is going to be a temperature battle. Now, this is your tropical pause, letting you know all your temperatures up there by your jet stream. You can see all these below average, all this cool air anomaly coming in. But on that second wave, still showing that second punch is going to be the coldest punch of it coming in as it goes past Thanksgiving and beyond in November. Keeping us in that pattern of that low trough on the West Coast, the high ridge on the East Coast, keeping that warm temperature battle right here for your snow and your ice transformation, potentially bringing ice storms along this battle still. I still believe that. Now you can see here from your vorticity, latest update that we do have that severe weather kicking in a little bit for the south as well. And it did carry into Tuesday a little bit further. But after that, we still have this storm that's building right over here in the south while we have this cold air anomaly coming down. And when this cold air comes down, this is going to bring the precipitation. But the question is, is the cold air going to meet up with this precipitation and bring this snowstorm further south and is it going to come overnight with the coldest temperatures instead of the daytime highs and you can see this here when you look at your six hour precipitation you have your freezing temperatures this 540 line this is your freezing temperatures and i got it on this so you can see the, how much precipitation this storm is bringing with it now the first one going towards the northeast you see obviously you're going to be getting rain out of that and there's not going to be any snow maybe for the end of it right here towards Maine. You see how the 540 line kicks in towards Maine on that precipitation, and that is about it. When we get that next storm in the south, it's going to bring storms across the south, and which is good. We still need that for Louisiana and Mississippi. And that's going to go towards the northeast, bring some more rainfall. That's your next five, six days. And look where the freezing line is. And look where the temperature line is. You don't get that freezing temperatures on some of it. Very light precipitation as that passes through the freezing temperatures, very light amounts, maybe by the 24th, because once you get to Thanksgiving, it's really a lot of rain and storms that's coming out of this, and you're getting some precipitation in the freezing temperatures in the Rocky Mountains. That's bringing their snowfall, but everyone else, it's just going to be too warm. It's not bringing a lot of precipitation with this storm, and it's not going too far to the south. You can see where the freezing line is. And it's not getting any precipitation. Maybe a little bit right here for the panhandle of Texas, Oklahoma. As you go past Thanksgiving, you got a chance to get a little bit right there. As you get to freezing temperatures, that is already moving towards six and seven days. That is going to change, unfortunately, as well. I am showing we still got that deep trough coming on the west coast. But we still going to be on a high ridge. And it's going to pull all that to the north. Not showing a lot of precipitation in the freezing temperatures, guys very light amounts now real quick on your updates you can see this for your severe weather for today a little marginal in oklahoma but it has mild way down no tornadoes not for winds this is a little chance for hail 
Now for tomorrow, you see it has grown. We have the marginal and the big slight risk. This is also chances for hail. You have the 15% right here and the 5% in the brown. So far, here's your cities and states at risk for the hail threat for Monday. Now it is bringing damage and winds as well with this. I'm not showing a lot, but National Weather Service has it out for a 15% and a 5%. So here's your cities and states at risk for the damage and winds with this storm coming and your chances for tornadoes you can see it has grown like i showed you in the beginning of the video the two percent and the five percent so far here's your cities and states at risk and you can see this from national weather service severe thunderstorms will be possible monday afternoon into monday night from east texas into parts of lower mississippi valley and southeast damage and wind and a few tornadoes are expected to be the primary hazards guys though some hail will be also possible now, showing that these dew points do stay nice and strong once it go into tomorrow morning for eastern Texas, going into Louisiana as well, guys. Need some strong dew points going into the high 60s as that carries across for tomorrow afternoon. Then as you go to tomorrow night. So here's a little bit of a closer look as you go through tomorrow morning and noontime. You're going to get this banding coming from eastern Texas. Northern Louisiana, Southern Arkansas, and as you go through the afternoon, it's going to be from Northern Mississippi. Start going through Louisiana. We start getting these cells, these bands that pull up these cells all the way from the Gulf. And it's going to push all the way from Monday night. You see, I got a little bit of Bowen. Not a lot, but you got a little bit of Bowen. And as you go all the way till Tuesday, it's going to spread into Mississippi, Alabama, the Panhandle, Florida. That's just going to move right across with this banding coming right on across. And that's where you got your chances for your tornadoes right along the coast now you can see this when you look at your cape your lift what gives you energy for these storms as you go through monday morning you got a lot of lift for eastern texas as that goes into louisiana goes in arkansas but then it goes into just louisiana it leaves arkansas from monday night and you see that's right along the coast for louisiana mississippi alabama the panhandle florida it stays right along the gulf coast so just be aware of it there's a lot of people a lot of main cities right there but it does go from eastern texas a little bit of oklahoma going to louisiana starts dropping down further and further to the south so when we check your chance for significant tornado primers that puts in factors of wind shear and dew points this puts in a lot of factors in motion of your best chance for tornadoes it shows early in the morning some of that banding if it gets started up could be over northeastern texas that's a little concerning for dfw that's early in the morning to think that you really have enough lift but it does show that you do get it by 10 11 o'clock but by the time you get to 10 11 o'clock it kind of leaves a little bit but it shows some strong chances for dfw that's a little bit concerning guys as you go through monday morning then as you go through the rest of the afternoon look how it stays south southeastern texas goes through louisiana your chances for tornadoes and then it goes through southern mississippi for monday night and then as you go through alabama and the panel of florida it starts congealing back up again we see how this starts shrinking this area starts shrinking of what you got for Tuesday. So Tuesday is going to start milding down. And you can see, just like we mentioned on Tuesday, they do have a marginal for severe weather. So far, here's your cities and states at risk. And National Weather Service has as thunderstorms capable of isolated damage and wind and possibly a tornado will be possible across parts of Alabama and a Florida panhandle on Tuesday, mainly early in the day. It's going to start dissipating after early in the day. Now, when you look at your winds aloft, you can see the winds start picking up once you get to the afternoon for northern Louisiana going towards Mississippi. It really don't have a lot of strong winds for eastern Texas. I really think it's going to start off in Texas, but really be a story for severe weather for Louisiana as you go through the afternoon. Carry into Mississippi. Also, I think it's going to be some damaging winds on the northern side potential threat for tornado on the southern side and that goes through alabama tennessee as well as you go through midnight and look at these strong winds carrying all the way through overnight hours bringing chances for damage and winds with that and you can see the latest update on the euro showing that it also carries that strength as it goes out through the northeast for tuesday afternoon going all across the northeast and the mid-atlantic as well chances for damage and winds now so far the euro's not showing a whole bunch of winds with any of that maybe along the coast might be some 50s but when you go by gfs it shows right on that storm right where those upper level winds strengthen up a little bit where it could be some damage in winds guys and so far it's showing it can go up to 40 to 50 as it goes from the north side of the deep south across tennessee kentucky valley and ohio valley intercoastal northeast i match that up with what euro is showing on this storm 
And it looks about right according to Euro's wins and maybe along the coast just like Euro is showing. I think that is true right there. Now you can see the latest update on the Euro that we will have that banning for the severe weather. But this storm will go up towards the northeast, bring the freezing rain, bring the snow. But it's still going to bring the rain after the snow and wash all that heavy snowfall away. Then we got an event coming for next Friday, guys. As we get towards the five-day and seven-day, what is that snowstorm going to do? I showed you it's not bringing a lot of precip. So far, not showing a lot coming out of that transition. So what I'm going to do is contribute what your chances of getting snowfall out of that Thanksgiving snowstorm. You can see right here for National Weather Service, your precipitation just for the next three days as you get that rainfall is going to start adding up. You're going to start getting one inches in all this orange, two inches in all this red as that goes out towards northeast. This is the next three days. You're getting some for Louisiana and Mississippi as well, which is a great thing. But this is going to be so beneficial to our drought, guys. This big rainfall is going to be perfect. It's, I'm so happy to finally see this. So proud to say on Monday, you have a flash flood watch going on all the way from the south, all the way towards the Tennessee, Kentucky Valley. This will raise up for Tuesday as well. It's going to carry all the way from Alabama and Georgia, go across the Carolinas, still going towards the northeast and carry even further towards Jersey on Tuesday. And on Wednesday is going towards the edge of the New England. Chances for flash flooding with this storm. Plus your latest update, you can see with this Arctic Oscillation, your cold air coming in. For Thanksgiving, it's still bombing all the way down. Now the Euro is showing that it's going to be over here around the 27th for its coldest day. GFS is showing it's going to be right on Thanksgiving. And now Canadian is a green, it's going to be on Thanksgiving, but not a green as cold as GFS. It's a green with Euro's temperatures. So you see how it's a little bit all over the place, but you can read it. I believe the trend is going to be around Thanksgiving right at maybe the evening and starting after that and lasting as long. You can see GFS is dipping as far as the Euro. I believe this dip is coming in as deep as the Euro from where the Canadian is saying in the GFS lasting as long as the Euro going towards the end of November still. Then possibly a warm up in the beginning of, of December and maybe another blast coming. Range with the Euro to Arctic Oscillation. You see this cold dip we got coming, big cold snap. Look at this big one we got coming at the beginning of December. A big long transition lasting a couple of weeks, colder and deeper than anything we're talking about yet. So you see the latest update on EPL, your East Pacific Oscillation. You still got a dip of cold air coming in from the 20th through the 22nd. Then you still got a very cold air, and they're all agreeing it's going to be deep all the way to the southwest, bringing this very cold anomaly 24th through the 27th being the coldest as it goes back up on your warm-up on the west coast. Now, when you're on this dip, we're going to be on a high ridge from the center to the east coast, and that's where that battle is going to be for your snowstorms and your ice storms to meet up. Now, for Thanksgiving, for Thanksgiving, you're going to be in the 20s right here. This is your Thanksgiving shot for Thanksgiving morning. A lot of people are going to be in the teen temperatures in the Rocky Mountains, upper Midwest, in the 20s, 40s from the center of the U.S. all the way south. You're still warm in the southeast 50s for North Panhandle of Florida and freezing in the Northeast. Now, as you go through Thanksgiving afternoon, it is going to warm right back up for everybody. And you are going to be in a little bit warmer temperatures in the South, the 50s and the 60s along the coast. But you're still going to stay in the 20s for upper Midwest for Thanksgiving. This is your highs for Thanksgiving, guys. Then a cold air is still coming for the 25th. All the way towards the end of the month, 26th, 27th, just colder and colder. 28th, I can go on forever, guys. That is literally was the 10 days with the Euro. But you can see with the wind chills, that wind chills is still going to be the worst as you go through the 21st, which is Tuesday, as you go through Wednesday to 22nd, and Thursday on the 23rd. Then you got your Thanksgiving. This is when a lot of this cold temperatures is moving through. This is your wind chills for Thanksgiving, feeling like a lot of teen temperatures, even some single digits and negative temperatures in the higher elevations. As you keep going, you see the 25th wind chills. It keeps getting worse. Look, the 26th, even deeper. Remember, I've been showing we have negative wind chills at the end of November moving through. Look at the single digits. By the end of November, guys. Now, take this with a grain of salt. That is 10 days. But like I've been saying yesterday, this is trending coming towards the end of November. Matter of fact, you can see the big change here. They took out all that heavy snowfall that was coming. It's not as heavy as people is saying, guys. This is going to be in Canada. 
you only have a slight risk for heavy snow for the intercoastal northeast. That is it. Now, when you look at a 10 day with the euro, try and do comparison. 10 days always change. I try and do comparison with six and seven days. You see, literally, that comes in in the last bit. This is seven days right here. Still bringing maybe an inch towards the panhandle of Texas. A little bit for the western side of the central plains. Coming to Colorado, Wyoming, y'all getting it good. And for the northeast, also chances for some good snow. But look, there's multiple storms. The first one coming in, bam, bringing it a good bit for the northeast. Now, that's a little bit heavier than what's been trending, but this is all the higher elevations, so that seems typical. And you see it goes all the way down towards Mexico. Then as you go towards Thanksgiving snowstorm, that's what brings in that snow according to the euro. And then maybe something coming after, but that's at the very end. So when you try and see what is the latest information, the Euro's not showing a lot of freezing rain on this transition. GFS for the next five days shows it's going to be lighter transition, but heavier still for New England. But you see it don't bring all that heavy snow. It's been showing everything will be more northern. Now, this is going too far already. It changes so dramatically, guys. Next seven days, you got a little bit of a snowstorm coming, but it's been showing this is coming all the way from the northern central towards the upper Midwest the whole time, and you're still getting that in the northeast. Showing a little bit heavier than before. Not showing a lot of chances of the freezing rain, but there is a transition still showing for the northeast. Now, when you look with the Canadian, Canadian shows the same thing as the Euro. Even that deep dip, higher elevation is getting that snow. And then maybe as you go towards the seven and eight days, then you have that little bit lighter of a storm passing through. All this gray is all one to two inches. Not really coming too far to the south. Maybe Oklahoma, according to Canada. Now, just like I've been showing you, this is 10 days. It always changes. But look how it keeps taking that troughing and the cold temperatures bringing that snow across further and further down the country. Same time, you see it's light amounts, a lot above average temperatures because we're in that deep trough on the west coast, higher ridge on the east coast. But somewhere in that battling, nighttime snowstorms could come in. But the Canadian is also seeing this battle, this transition battle of the freezing rain that's coming right on that line of the warm temperatures and the freezing temperatures that's coming down with this chances. But once again, that second one is the 10 day. The northeast is still trending a little bit. Then it's the 10 day. But once again, to take that with a grain of salt, all we can do is keep doing updates. This is not definitely coming, but it is still trendy. Just to go by your next 10 day, that will change. Just by GFS, you definitely got a lot of snow going towards Quebec. A little bit in Ontario. You see with the Euro, the same thing. Not getting a whole bunch in Ontario. All this is going to be going towards Quebec. And also over towards Nova Scotia, according to both of them. Getting over feet of snow. Look at all this heavy snow fall for New Brunswick. Over two feet of snow coming your way. So this is a blockbuster snowstorm. It is bringing a lot of snow. But is it bringing a lot of snow to the U.S.? It's getting lighter and lighter. Now, when you go by the control member of GFS, you can see right here for the West Coast is your control member. The only outcome you really want to pay attention to. More than likely outcome. Next 10 days, too far anyway. But next 10 days, maybe get a three to five swath of snow across the Rocky Mountains. And as you look towards the east side of the U.S., you see that snowstorm comes across up towards upper Midwest, still bringing a light snowstorm, a swath, but a light. And as you go towards northeast, intercoastal northeast, maybe getting three to five, not a lot. The blockbuster will be in Quebec. The blockbuster will be in Canada, guys. So taking it part by part in five days, going by this, is just a control memory, more like the outcome. As that snowstorm comes in, it could bring three inches and some places getting one to two inches. That's what you're getting out of that. All that blue is three to five. All that gray is one to two. Now, maybe after seven days, might add up to a couple more storms. You see how they all are Xing right over Iowa. You have your best chance for getting any snow out of anybody. But you see how this all come in this pattern over and over. Then finally maybe adding up. This is like three storms coming trying to show this big snowstorm, guys. And maybe none of them will drop hardly anything. And for the South Central, I'll try to give you the best case scenario. I know y'all want some snow to see it down there. I'm from the South. You see a couple model runs do show that it does have pretty big. You might even see this. Control member says you will not. And I am checking two weeks for you guys, not 10 days. You're not going to get no snow. Now you can see in the next 10 days, still too far to say it's really going to happen. You see how this lightens up in the control member for that snowstorm that's coming through. Now this is believable. This is what we're starting to see come out through the models. 
And after that, maybe add up another little light brushing, come across the northern half of Ohio Valley, a little bit of Great Lakes, and add up to the northeast. That's what's probably going to happen. It's another snowstorm is what's going to bring that northeast snow. And you can see this here. So literally in three days, this snowstorm is going to start adding up in the northeast. And you're not getting a lot of it. But you can see after you go past three days, then you get a second snowstorm that comes in, adds up for Canada. And you get another one that probably comes in, adds up a little bit more for the intercoastal northeast. So now we are looking at 10 days. No use of going past this. I mean, even if it shows more, there's no use going past it, guys. This is going to change. And so far, not showing much at all. All right, so I know the video is already long enough. I really don't care. I just want to keep people as safe as possible, guys. So hopefully, y'all use the timestamps. Those that are in a rush. I want to go through this real quick with HRRR. What's coming on with these chances for these storms that's coming? And you see this up here. This is your central time. This is where I'm at. 11 o'clock for tomorrow. You do got storms coming through eastern Texas, going through Arkansas, going through Louisiana. And I'm staying south because this is where all your convection is going to be on the southern side. And you're going to start getting this cells, getting this banding moving through as you go through tomorrow afternoon. Now, this is coming across Louisiana. I'm not showing a lot of huge strength just yet, but any one of these cells could easily spin up a supercell. It could spin up a tornado. You see how you get in a hail core right around tomorrow night coming off the Gulf of Mexico. Now, none of these cells look super serious to me. I see some every now and then. I'm not showing a big trail like we normally get in our severe weather. I'm not showing it to be a big tornado outbreak that's coming with that, but that is gonna be some nasty banding moving through for tomorrow night. And it can't go too far, but you see it goes all the way towards Alabama as well as we go towards Tuesday morning. And it's gonna move a little bit further east. Now this has changed as far as the space of it, how much of it is actually gonna be a threat. You see it has gone down some, so it is gonna move further east and go further down. But you see also that that tail it's also bringing some right here in front of it. So you got to watch out for that as you go through tomorrow night. So tomorrow night is going to come right across Louisiana. This bandy come across Mississippi later at night. And the city of New Orleans right around 8 o'clock. 8 to 10 o'clock. Y'all going to hear some strong storms coming through Louisiana and Mississippi. And then it's going to finish off going through Alabama. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you all have a very great Sunday out there. I will keep you updated every single day. Make sure you subscribe if you like the kind of content that I provide. And I hope you have a very blessed day today. Now, I'm going to leave you all with God's word today. Job 5.17 Behold, happy is a man whom God correcteth. Therefore, despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. Amen. He does help us. Even when he scorns us, we don't see it, but he is shaping us, which is a very blissful thing. So that's a good thing. Thank you so much for your time, everybody. Hope you have a very great day. Remember, all glory always goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And hope he always keeps you safe, you and your family, every single day of your life and forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Have a great day. Everybody. Sorry for a little being a horse, guys. I have multiple jobs and I still do homeschool, so I'll just talk all day and all night long. Hope you have a very great day, and thank you again for your concerns. I have read them, and I appreciate you so much.